Okay, good morning. Really nice to see everyone. Welcome to Business Connect for 2021. Uh, really nice to see a lot of familiar faces, a lot of people rejoining us for the new year. And if you are uh, maybe coming for the first time this year, I want to give you a huge warm welcome. My name's Dan, uh, part of one of a number of us that help host uh, this online gathering of people in our church and beyond our church even, but really we're primarily made up of uh, business people or aspiring business people in Hillsong Church. So uh, a lot of us are kingdom builders, a lot of us, you know, really believe part of what we're called to do is uh, finance the vision of the kingdom of God. And uh, we have people in here that are just interested or wanting, wanting to be involved in business. So however you find yourself here, welcome, really glad that you're here. And uh, I know this morning you're going to be really impacted by what is shared, what is brought. Um, in just a moment, I'm going to invite Andrew to, uh, to share with us, but at the end, we might open up for some uh, questions. So uh, I, I, I might have a couple, but I'm willing to, willing to take the chance somewhat and open the floor if, uh, if the climate's right. And, you know, we'll, we'll th throw a couple of questions at Andrew. So we'll finish promptly at eight, as we always do. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be good. I'm really excited. Um, occasionally people ask me what the plan is with Business Connects. Uh, and I, I mean, my answer is not very visionary. I sort of just say, look, we're going to keep going until they stop working, really, until um, there's no longer an appetite. So uh, at the moment, we're just going to keep powering forward and hopefully uh, bringing inspiration, building people's lives. And uh, yeah, thanks for being part of it. It's uh, really cool. But um, Andrew, uh, we, we welcome, first of all, really nice to see you again. Uh, we, had, we had breakfast or we had a coffee last week and had a great catch up. It was really, really nice spending a bit of time with you uh, for the new year. Um, but uh, how was, I guess, just before I officially hand over to you, how was 2020 as a whole for you? You sort of made a couple of comments to me, but yeah, how was the year and how was your experience of it all finishing the year and coming into a new one? I think um, finishing the year. I think I think um, this is why we should never quit. <laughs> um, it's not about how you start; it's definitely how you finish. And 2020 definitely finished well for me. Didn't start great. Didn't start great for a lot of people, but it definitely finished well. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Very happy with it. Mm. Yeah. Did, yeah. Yeah. How was all in all? Was how was business for you? Business was, in the end, business was fantastic. We're going to talk a little bit about it this morning here. But, um, yeah, I mean, what what looked horrendous at one point um, turned around and uh, yeah, it was fantastic in the end, very yeah. much so. Oh, good. Mm. And, look, I mean, I know that's definitely hasn't been everyone's story. Um, but uh, I guess we were chatting, like, uh, even as we were chatting, I think we both said there just seemed to be something in gathering. Uh, last year, we did make a very intentional effort to gather, even though it was online, we're gathering with people that had, I guess, the same values, same intentions, um, same desire to see God work in our lives, in our church and in our businesses. And yeah, it was kind of cool. I think a lot of the, a lot of the stories that came from people in this group, I mean, sometimes you do hear the good stories, you know, people tend to uh, tell a good story where sometimes they can tend to maybe, if they're really having a challenging time can tend to maybe not voice it as as openly but I, I do think an overwhelming number of stories really positive and uh, yeah I guess the same goes for this year if you know love to hear the good stories but also if if you're needing support if you need prayer encouragement if there's anything we can do to serve you please uh, don't be a stranger to us we'd love to love to at least just have a chat and pray for you and and then see what we can do from there. So um, it's cool. But uh, yeah, looking forward to more of those good stories this year too, by the way. But Andrew, um, look, you're an absolute inspiration to me, to a lot of us. Uh, I think to most of us, you need very little introduction, but uh, I think it would be, you know, it would be dishonor dishonoring of me to say nothing. Um, so I really do want to say thank you for the part you play in so many of our lives in our greater world. I know your book has now been translated into even more languages, including Romanian. Um, and I know just that deposit to, to, to us, to the church, has 
is something that's going to well out, outlast you and just continue to build your legacy. So uh, thank you for all you do and really honoured to have you sharing with us point. Fantastic. Thanks, Dan. Uh, look, I, I don't know about everybody else, but I was excited about just coming back to Business Connect. Uh, I think um, last year I, I found was brilliant. And I think from the comments I've heard from many people um, that were very, very much wanting Business Connect to start again. And so it is an honor for me to um, start it again this year. So, hey, let's pray, hey? It's always a good way to start. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to have Lord this morning to speak to everybody here. Holy Spirit, I pray that you will speak through me. But Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, you touch people's lives today and I leave here bigger, better changed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, as, as Dan was saying, I don't know how 2020 went for you. I really don't. Uh, for some, it was definitely a year that you want to forget. <laughs> For many, it was a year that despite the challenges, you're glad you went through it. I'm actually glad that I went through it. Um, I don't know about you, but I only learned things in the tough times. In the good times, we're all geniuses, remember? And um, it's in the, in the tougher times that we start to learn things. And you know what always may have seemed important really wasn't that important. And what, what, what was once part of who you thought you were is no longer reality. I know for me, one of my initial challenges, well, I thought it was a challenge, was I wasn't able to travel to churches around the world anymore, you know, and help them launch their kingdom builders. But instead, you know, I took a total paradigm shift there and found Zoom. We always had Zoom, didn't we? But we just didn't, didn't use it. And, um, but more importantly for me, certainly it was the, ideal time for me to launch my book you know um well no is this god knew all along that this pandemic was was coming and he knew that i would be stuck in sydney and i'd have so much more time that was required to launch the book you know i've been working on that thing for three years and um and it sort of it sort of stalled and everything and yet it was exact time for me to put that in because I realized there was a whole lot of work involved in actually getting that book offline, online, sorry, and, and getting it all through there. And as uh, Dan alluded now, uh, the thing is now translated into Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, Romanian, German will be out in about a week or so. French will be out in March. Um, yeah, so it's, it's been quite amazing. We're, I'm in the process of writing a study guide to now go with the book. And hopefully in the next couple of weeks as well, we'll launch a little seven day devotional on you version. So if you'd asked me that even a year ago, we'd be doing those things, I wouldn't have thought that. And yet certainly what has happened through 2020 has brought that about for me. You know, for those of, those, those of you who have read my book and I, I hope you have, you know, you realize one of the things I talk about in there is I used to take Mondays off. I used to take Mondays away from the office and I'd spend that with Susan. Well, she's been with me seven days a week now, <laughs> every day for the whole year, you know? And um, I started to do things I haven't done before. I became a walker. I've never walked anywhere. I'd walk to the car. That was about as far as I would walk. But you know, now we were walking to our, our local cafe and my wife even took up drinking coffee. She hasn't drunk coffee for over 20 years. and. Uh, but, you know, we got to spend more time together than we ever have. So that's only a good thing. Here's something different. You know, I used to travel to Queensland a lot where all my, all my sites are. Last year, for the entire year, I went four times. Four times. And one of those was a six-month gap between going. And yet, as I alluded earlier, by the end of 2020, we had sales like we hadn't seen in over 10 years. And we weren't even there. So that just encouraged me that, that you know, God's, God has these things under, under control. And, uh, but, you know, here's the thing that I've loved the most that I've heard from a lot, of, a lot of people about 2020. And that was that it was their personal relationship with Jesus that went to a whole nother level. And I, and I really mean that. You know, I've got a, a good mate of mine who's been in church 
most of his life. His father was a pastor. He's almost 60 years old. And yet he freely admits that this last year of 2020, he had a stronger relationship with God than he ever has. And he ever has in his, his entire life. And he wasn't in church on Sundays and, you know, wasn't digging around all the people and everything. But he, he, he absolutely just knuckled down and made, made a point that if, if it's going to be about having a relationship with God, it's up to me. It's up to me. And I don't know about you, I just heard testimony after testimony from people within this connect group as well. You know, their, their natural business you know, looked to be demolished, you know, due to COVID. And yet they've seen the total opposite, the total opposite of that come about. And I was actually just talking to one of our kingdom builders in Amsterdam last night. Amsterdam, I mean, I mean we think we've got it tough over here. Europe is, Europe, Europe is a mess. I mean, Europe is a mess. And yet he saw his business go from 8 million euro turnover last at the year before to this last 2020, 23 million euro turnover. And he was... He was just saying, hey, all I can put it down to is it's God, is it's God. And so, you know, I just, all I know is this, and I think that's what's been so important for the people who have continued to connect to, to this Business Connect as well, is hopefully over this time, you know, Dan's put the right speakers in place here to keep us continually making the decision to fully trust God, to fully trust him. And, and to continue to take that faith step. And, and so I, I just want to remind us today at, the, at our first connect for the year, we just need to get back to the basics. Let's not complicate things. I, I, I like things simple. I'm a simple man. I like them simple. Let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's put God first in our lives and let's make 2021 an even greater year to us all. And so I just want to give you three things. And you've probably heard most of these from me before, but you know, that's why we repeat things because people don't necessarily do what they're told. <laughs> I'm included. I'm included in that. But I, I want to get back to these basics. And it's these basics that when I've spoken to the people over this over the pursuing months, that I've seen them really basically get into these things that their, their lives have just completely turned around for the better in every area, including their business, including their business. So here's number one, write this one down, read your Bible every day. I know, how basic is that? Read your Bible every day. You've all heard me say it before, but I, I just can guarantee that in a, in a group this size, and I've got no idea how many online here at the moment, but I just know that there'll be a lot of you who maybe have started last year, you got, you got on the track and you got going, but for whatever reason, you fell off the wagon. Can I encourage you? That's okay. Start up again today. Today. It doesn't have to be a 1st of January thing. You know, you, you can start to read your one-year Bible today on the 28th of January. That's fine. That's fine. But here's the point. Pick it up, pick it up and start to read it. But I want you just to read it, not for the sake of reading it to tick the box, okay? I want you to read it because why, what's the ultimate reason we're doing this? Because you want to hear from God clearer. You want God to guide your path better. And so when you pick it up, you're reading it with that intentionality, that, that absolute God, I need you to speak to me today. I need you to speak to me today. Now. I hope you're not somebody who just picks and, and flicks and away you go. That's not the way to read the Bible, trust me. I, I, I really encourage you to get a reading plan. If you want to know the reading plan, I'm even going to tell you. It's called the One Year Bible. Okay, guys? The One Year Bible, a new version. Has a bit of Old Testament, a bit of New Testament, proverb and a psalm every day. Keeps it very interesting. Takes about 15 minutes to read. That's it. But the point is this. Read it. Do it. If you've got to set an alarm initially, but do it. But read it with that intentionality. That God's going to give you your verse today, not the verse of the day, your verse for the day. Your verse is actually speaking to you. 
And here's the next step that I want you to take. This is what's going to help to give you some accountability. I want you to share that verse. Share that verse. I started many years ago with two men. Two men. I just started sending them a verse every day. At first, they thought I was a weirdo, you know, but I'm telling you, after a while, they realized, hey, Andrew actually reads his Bible every day. You know, those same two guys still send me verses as well. Now, I send it to my family. I have a family chat. But now I send it to like something like 54 people around the world every day. But I tell you what, that keeps me on my toes about reading my Bible. Why? Because 54 people are expecting to get a verse from me every day. But I want the verse. Not just I want the verse. I need the verse. I don't know about you, but I, I need to hear from God every day. I've still got plenty of challenges in my business, plenty of challenges in my family, health, all those things. I need to hear from God. And let me just encourage you. There's no better place to hear from God than from God's word. So make that decision. Make that decision. My friend, uh, Henry Brandt from Sweden, we had him speak once last year. He says about reading your Bible daily, he says, it's not a burden. It's a lifeguard and a giver of life. I thought, that's, I thought that was fantastic. I'll read it again. It's not a burden. It's a lifeguard and a giver of life. You cannot afford to not be reading your Bible every day with that absolute expectation that God is going to speak to you. All right? Make, make that decision. Make that decision. It's a game changer, people, okay? Game changer. Don't go to bed tonight until you've contacted at least somebody, one person, and you're going to send them your verse today. Make, make the choice. Make the choice. I, I, I just know it, it's, it's crazy how good, it, how good a difference it makes. All right. Number two. Pray every day with someone else. Now, I want you to pray. This is not stopping you praying, praying by yourself, your own time with God. But I want you to pray every day with someone else. Now, if you're married, okay, now, I don't have any people are married, but I'm sure there's lots of single people on this line here as well. You got to find somebody else. Married, definitely, I want you to pray with your spouse every day. Now, oh, I know once again, you may have started this last year and yet you've fallen off the wagon. Can I encourage you? Make the decision. I'm going to pray every day. Every day. And you know those days when you still love your spouse, you just don't like them as much, even on those days, especially on those days. That's the day you got to make a decision, make a decision. In fact, my, my friend Henry, I'm using an example again this morning. He, he and his wife made a decision that when the other person grabs the other person by the hand and says, we have to pray. There's no pulling away. No, no, no. We're praying. Here's what I know. When you pray together, you can't be angry at each other. God, God brings that, brings that important. Now, trust me, guys, guys and girls, if you're single, it's just as important. In fact, I think it's more important that as a single person, you put some other people in your life that you can pray with. If you think you can do this on your own, that's when you're most in trouble. <laughs> that's when you're most in trouble. I, I, um, through COVID last year, probably around about June last year, I had a man contact me from Norwich in England. And uh, I was like, uh, I think I'd spoken at one of his, uh, on, on a Zoom meeting to his church. Uh, they're a Hillsong family church there, they're run by John Norman. And he contacted me and he's, he'd just gone through a divorce and, but he knew he was to be a kingdom builder. And he said, what do I do? What do I do? I'm in, I'm in a loss of a mess. And I encouraged him to find two other men that he could pray with. Well, I met, I met those guys one month later. Because my encouragement is to this, guys. I want you to put, set the challenge up to just pray together for 30 days, one month. Don't say you can do this, Reddit, it's too hard. Just go for 30 days. I guarantee you in 30 days, you'll already see a change in your life. And these, these two other men, the, th the three of them, got together on a Zoom call with me. And, and just one month in, they couldn't believe the changes in their own lives. Then I met with them three months after that. So four months in, four months in, huh. here's my challenge. I say to people, in four months time, if you praying together every day, either with your spouse or with a couple of other people, other people will notice the change in your life. And I tell you, 
That's exactly what happened. I met with these three guys again and I, I, I challenged them. So what have you found? Amazing, amazing. One of the other guys is actually married. So he started to pray with his wife as well. Because, you know, guys, I want you to continue to pray with your wives and someone else if you have to, but his marriage has gone to another level. Another guy, he couldn't believe it. His business has just taken off. And he said, all I can put it down to is the prayer I'm having with these guys. Because guess what? They're speaking into each other's lives every day. They're hearing from the Holy Spirit. They're making themselves accountable. They're keeping themselves transparent. And they know they've got this group of people who's just going to support them and have their back. Can I tell you guys, the world is not getting an easier place to be a Christian. It's actually getting a harder place to be a Christian. Okay. But I believe, in fact, I don't believe, I just I know, I know that when we do this together in unity, that three stranded cord, man, I'll tell you what, unbreakable, unbreakable. And here's what I do now, guys. If you do this for 12 months, 12 months straight, husbands, let me tell you, you'll never, ever stop. And I mean that you will never, ever stop. This is now who you are. This is what you do. And, and I'm telling you, I know this. You pray with your wife every day for 365 days. You can't have a bad marriage. You just can't have a bad marriage. And, and single people, I'm telling you, once again, you know, you, you, get, you get three ladies together praying together every day. Watch out, because I really believe you ladies here from the Holy Spirit. So it'll be zinging around there. But guys, still works for the guys as well. We also can hear from the Holy Spirit. We've got to listen a bit harder. That's why you got to read your Bible better. You know, but um, I can't just encourage you. It's just a, it's just a simple thing. Just a simple thing. And, and I've just had, I, I could sit here all day and tell you testimony after testimony after testimony that I've heard from my travels around the world where I've encouraged people to pray together, the change it makes, ridiculous. So good, so good. All right, my last point. We've got plenty of time for questions after. Here's my last point. Write the vision down. Write down your dreams and goals. You know, Habakkuk 2 verse 2 says, write the vision, make it plain, simple, clear, black and white, that you may run, okay? He may run that reads it. You can run. You want to be running in life. You don't want to be just dawdling along, tripping along. You want to be running in life. And how you do that? When you have your vision out there playing. I know, once again, you've all heard this before. And yet the statistics out in the world, and I'm telling you it's no different here in the church, 97% of people don't write down their dreams and goals. That means only 3% do. Trust me, people, you want to be part of the 3%, not the 97, okay? <laughs> the 97 live reactively in life. The 3% proactively, proactively. They know where they're heading. They know where they're heading. You know, my friend Lee Domain, we've had Lee speak here again last year as well, and it'd be great if we get him again this year. I'm sure he'll speak for us, but he says this. He says, a dream written down with a date becomes a goal. A goal broken down into steps becomes a plan. A plan backed by action becomes reality. I'll read that to you again. A dream written down with a date becomes a goal. A goal broken down into steps becomes a plan. And a plan backed by action becomes reality. Becomes reality. I can guarantee you. The people that I've heard that had the testimonies in their lives of how things changed last year, they had to change things. They had to write things down. They had to replan. They had to refocus. They had to put things in place. But when they've done that, the reality is they've seen their lives turned around in every area of your life, in every area of your life. So I know we're talking here as, as business people, but... Why don't you write down what you want to see in your marriage? What do you want to write down you want to see in your future partner? What do you want to write down to see what you want to see with your children and their spouse in the future? What do you want to write down? What do you want to, what do, you want to do for holidays? What do you want to do? Where's the house you want to live in? What, I tell you, write it all down. 
if you don't have a plan, okay, you'll hit you'll hit nothing. <laughs> you'll just run and, and just bounce through life from one disaster to the next. Three years will go past and you wonder what happened. I, I know people. I know. There's a reason why I'm bald and got grey whiskers. I've been around a while and I've made lots of mistakes. Okay. But this is an important one. This is a very big important one. I, I know this too, that you know, um Matthew 22 verse 14 says, many are called, but only a few are chosen. Hmm. Say that one again. Many are called. I'm putting the call out here now. Many are called, but only a few are chosen. I, I think, I think I'm a massive believer in that those who are prepared, opportunity comes their way. I, I just know that God is not going to drop blessing on you if you're not positioned to handle it. If you're not positioned to handle it, you're not going to see the blessing. Put yourself in a position that when the blessing comes, you're going to be able to handle it. And I'll just know, how do you do that? Well, you start dreaming. How do you do it? You start planning. How do you do it? You start putting action in place. Put those things in place. And I just know that when you get prepared, the opportunity will come. That's, that's the cool thing about trusting God. As I said, beginning of last year, I had no, no idea how things were going to change. In fact, pre-COVID last year, in January last year, when I could still go to Queensland, we went to we go to Noosa every year for holidays, missed it this year, but we'll get there again. <laughs> I had a prophecy for, actually over me from the pastor there at, at Hillsong Noosa, Jamie. And it was a pretty awesome prophecy, what he had to say. But there was this little nagging thing, you know, because I'm only human, and the back of me said, how was that going to happen? Because it was, it was a huge promise of what was going to come this year. I thought, okay, all right. Well, yeah, I, 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 in my mind, I could not have see how that was going to happen. Pre-COVID. Then when COVID hit, <laughs> I'm reading this thing. Because here's the thing. So you guys, where are you putting it? Where are you putting your dreams? Where are you putting it? I opened my, my bathroom cabinet. And inside, inside my, it's just covered in all the stuff all the things that I'm reading and looking at, because I want to put that into my spirit every day, into my spirit every day. And I remember reading that just after COVID all hit, and I'm thinking, wow, God, that word you gave me at the beginning of the year, whew, I'm definitely in your hands now. I'm definitely in your hands now. So we've got to start to change some things. We've got to start to put some things in place. But what we're going to do is, man, I had to really get into my word. I had to really be praying. Why? Because I needed to hear from God so he could guide my path and here it was come the end of the year i saw that happen what are you asking for for 21 i remember um it was like i remember it was literally only last week i was i still opened up my cover again because i try and read it every day and i'm reading the prophecy from last year and i'm like yeah that's great god but i need one for this year i need one for this year I can tell you that very day, last just last week, a woman handed me a letter, a three-page letter that was all typed out of a prophecy she had for me and for my wife. That was astounding. And it was spot on in lots of ways. And guess what? It's now inside my inside my bathroom cabinet. What are you asking for? What are you praying for? What are you believing for? What do, you, what, what, what do you see? Where are you heading? Or are you just sitting on the TV, on the, on the lounge with your remote, wondering when God's going to bless you? I think the fact that you're here connected to this meeting this time in the morning here tells me that you want this. So make sure you search out in the coming months and share, search me out. I want, I want you to share your testimonies with me, okay? Because they will come. They will come. You will have testimonies from decisions you make today on these three basic items. You'll have testimonies. And please, please, please don't quit. Don't quit. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. It's how you finish. Amen. Thanks, Dan.
Love it, Andrew. Sensational. Thank you so much, mate. Can we give him a huge uh, thank you, whether it's a clap or encouragement in the chat? Uh, yeah, thank you, mate. That, that was so good. You know what's really cool is there's people, some of them in here that now, you know, every day send me a verse because you've planted that seed. One guy, notably, I'm just going to mention him because he's one of those guys that's just happy to exist in the background and things like this. David Kassan, he... I think he sat with you. I was in the meeting, sat with you maybe a year and a half ago, maybe two, two years ago, um, and took that challenge on. And every day, every single yep. day, I had another pastor come up to me the other day and had met David at the gym. And David said, oh, you know, I'd organized catch up. And he said, oh, you know, met, met a friend of yours, David, what's he like? And I literally pulled my phone out and I said, look, he sends me a Bible verse every single day, you know, and just, it's so cool because that's one of so many people that I think have just been inspired. So you said at the start, it was simple. I love simple, Andrew. It, uh, even that was simple, it, inspiring and uh, made impacting. I took all of those on board, reinvigorated and, and ready. So I think we do have a couple of questions. Um, I might throw out a couple of people in particular I know have questions and then uh, feel free if you've got a question, just flick me a little message on the chat and I'll prompt you. But uh, Look, this guy, no surprise, never short of a question. Peter Lowe, um, <laughs> thank you. And, and by the way, Pete, you don't have to be easy on Andrew. You you know, we're here for the real stuff, so go for it, mate. I really loved uh, when you talked about putting the notes on the inside of the shower cabinet because that was kind yeah. of like, what's the one thing you can do that can really implement because of we can get the dream, but how do you review it? But the question is, from all the people you speak to, what's kind of like the one thing that you see stop people following through? Like, you, you know, what's the one thing that kind of holds people back? I think um, just doubt, fear, you know, uh, whatever word you want to call it, you know, because the, the challenges of life will come and they do come. Mm -hmm. and, um, and those challenges could be in the form of, you know, you, you, you and your spouse having an argument that morning and so you don't pray together. Mm. And when, as soon as you don't put a prayer together, pray together, the devil's got a little wedge in there and then it just makes it bigger and bigger and bigger and then suddenly, you know, you're not praying together anymore and it's been a week. Mm. And, and, you know, and you're both embarrassed and all this. No, 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 no. Mm. Make the decision. That's why I said, <laughs> whether you're fighting or not, whoever grabs each other by the hand and says we're praying, we're praying. Mm. Now, same with, let's say you're a single guy. I don't care how, how upset you are. Mm. Your, your mate's going to call you and say, let's pray. Well, mm. let's pray, mm. you know? And so um, I think it's the fear and the doubt that um, stops people. Mm. And that's why we've just got to be, but just tell, tell yourself, I'm going to be faithful, not fearful. Mm. Yeah. And when you, um, the other question, you know, when you look back on this year for you and there are these times where it was really tough, what do you, what's, What's the emotion and the feeling, the things you're doing when it's really tough? You know, is it, is it the same thing? I just keep looking on the inside of that shower cabinet, but because we can just hear the story and kind of yeah. at the top of the mountain, but like you kind of skimmed over this year, which was, I mean, COVID yeah. it wasn't looking good. No, look, you know, um, I have plenty of challenges. Trust me, plenty of challenges. Uh, if you read my book, I talk about under attack means that you're right on track. So I'm always going to have the challenges, but I can honestly say, and I'm, I'm absolutely saying this guys to encourage you. I've been doing this this long now. I'm really not fearful. I have no clue what's going to happen and how it's going to happen, but I know this, that God has got it. God has got it. There's been, there, were, there were a few times this year, cash flow is a big thing in business. And in my business, it is. I know that. And, and in my business, in property development, you're not looking for a couple of hundred bucks. You're not looking for a couple of hundred thousand. I'm looking sometimes for millions of dollars and I don't always have it in my back pocket, you know? Mm. And yet I'm telling you time after time, after time, after time this last year, I saw God turn up. Mm. And so I, I'm, I, I really, I want to encourage you people. Mm. I have just as many challenges as you do, maybe more. And yet I'm no longer fearful because I know God's got it. Mm. I just know, like I know, like I know. And I'm, that's why I'm reading my Bible. But I, I need to hear from God. I need to be encouraged because I have the challenges. But I am, I am, I sleep well. No problem. God's got it. Who's next? 
Love it. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, Andrew. I think Jazz might have had a question. Throw over you, Jazz. Yes, thank you, Andrew. This morning was amazing. I took lots of notes. Um, also wanted to say thanks so much for your book. My cousin who read it, she's 21 years old, a full-time university studier. As soon as she finished your book, within a day she finished it, she texted me and said, how do I set up to be a kingdom builder? And the crazy thing is, which I won't share all the details because it's her testimony, but she's just come in to 10 times the amount of her commitment, which has just been an absolute mm. crazy God story. But I'll, I'll let her share that one day. Um, but my question is, do you have a methodology to vision casting and goal setting? Look, um, I, I'm actually not a very organized person. That's probably something you need to talk to Pete Lowe about. Um, he said me that way. I just, to me, it's sitting down and writing down what you want. You got to actually, you got to come to that point in your life and realize what do I really want? What do I really want? What is, what is most important to me in my life? You know, and um, when you actually get that in place, it helps you then to put the structure around what you want to, what you want to see. You know, here I was, I had set that goal that, you know, Mondays I'm spending the time with my wife. Uh, and yet the whole year we, we spent every day together, you know, since crazy, um, you know, I'm, sp I'm, I'm going to, we're going to look after our grandkids twice a week, you know, um, now it's hard, it was hard work yesterday or three of them, but um, it's important. How do I do that? Well, I, I make, I make, make a practical decision. And so it, it's, it is quite simple. When it, don't, I want to say it's don't complicate it. Just sit, take the time, turn the phone off, turn the TV off, you know, put kids to bed if they're up and they're making noise, whatever. But just sit down and start to talk. What do we want? Where do we want to see ourselves? How do we want to how do we want to achieve those things? And you know, where do we think God's taken us? And just to just write them down. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. In fact, it's probably not going to be perfect. But write it down. Here's what I know. God will then bless you above and beyond that. If you don't write it down, there's nowhere to start. Hope that helps. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Jazz. And thank you. Thanks, Andrew. That was great. We probably have time for one more question and then I might get you to uh, pray for us as you send us out. But Steph Knowles, you may have had a question. Good morning. I've got. Huh? Go it's, it's where he totally wasn't expecting to be special. Sorry. Go, Steph. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Good morning, Andrew. Thank you so much for this morning. That was amazing. And um, I love the fact that you're sharing about, you know, getting back to basics and keeping it simple. I think that is the, the year that we need to all be on track with. But what I wanted to ask you was, going back to your book, you have touched so many people and I loved hearing this morning about how it's in now in so many different languages. Yeah. That's incredible. But what, while you were writing it during and after, what has impacted you personally the most about you putting your book together? Um, wow. Okay. That's a question. It's a good question. What does that give me the most? I think what has impacted me the most has been the people from all walks of life. Yeah. And I mean this, all walks of life who have, who have contacted me and it's totally changed their perspective. And, it's, and they've totally understood now who they are and who their purpose is. And, you know, random people, I had a man contacted me out of, out of uh, Dallas, Texas, not part of our church, just part of another church. He just found me on Instagram and contacted me and, we had a chat and I had, had his pastor on the line of like, they're like, how do we start Kingdom Builder? We want to start this, bang, 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 you know? And then I've had people from, in fact, across the world, you know, people having to use Google Translate to speak to me, but they're reading it in English. And, and I think it's just amazed me that the reach, the reach of the book, and I still think we've only just scratched the surface. And um, that's why I'm, I'm now putting this study guide together to actually make it even more understandable for people. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's pretty simple, but I want to really dumb it down, you know? And um, now what, I want to do is I want to get people to be practical. Yeah. And that's what we talked about today, these 
these simple steps. I want actually people to realize it's as simple as writing on a piece of paper and sticky taping it inside your cupboard. But as long as you, when you open up to brush your teeth in the morning, there it is. Read it, read it, look at it, see it, know who you, what you're going for. Because otherwise, when you, when you wake up in those days when it's tough and it's hard <laughs> and, and the devil's just throwing things at your head, but yeah. about to pick it up now and, and, and there it is and it's written down, it encourages you. That's why you need to read your Bible. That's why you need to pray, pray with your spouse or pray with your friends and sort of stuff because it's, it's just so important. And so, so for me, the long-winded answer to that is that I think it's just been encouraging to see how many people this has impacted and it's not a complicated book you know that most people can read it in half a day uh, but i wrote it that way i, I wanted to be that way that that it's that, that anybody can read it you know the young 21 year old girl to the 60 year old it doesn't matter so thank you oh thank, thank you, you so good and it's in it, what i love also is it's in large print <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well i hey, so you're working it out i'm a simple man if it works for me, it should work for anybody else. No. no. So good. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Steph. Great question. And thank you, Andrew. Look, this morning was, was just a gem. Thanks for, uh, yeah, everything. I know, yeah, it's just, I feel like I've just got a little bit more direction as, as you know, the year continues to roll on. We're nearly a month of the way through the year, which I find crazy already. But, um, yeah, yeah Andrew, just, I guess we'll, We'll finish up and uh, I might get you to pray for everyone and, and yeah. dismiss us. I guess, as you do, I just mentioned next week, we have Stephen Crouch uh, coming to share with us. Uh, oh, Stephen good. is, I mean, a lot of you might know Donna from, uh, you might have you know, heard Donna preach on a weekend. Stephen sits on our board, runs several businesses, and in fact has run and overseen Business Connects out of our Hills campus and even on a broader spectrum for many, many years. So... Uh, I'm really excited about that. Um, thank you everyone for coming this morning, but Andrew, if you could pray for us and just yeah. farewell us, that'd yeah. be great. Thanks. Thank you, Father Lord. I thank you for this time of us joining together and the start of the year here, Lord. And I just pray that these few simple thoughts, Lord, that I've shared, I just pray that they go into people's hearts, Father, that they make decisions today and that they take that, put that discipline in their life to continue with it. Lord, I know, I know, like I know, Lord, you want to share your, your thoughts with them. You want to share and guide their path, Father. Just help them to keep their eyes and ears open and bless them, Father. Bless them. May their day go out ahead of them. May they have favor, unmerited favor, Father, and blessing that's going to blow their socks off. I thank you for them all. Bless you. Look forward to seeing you next week. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you, guys. Hey, um Sorry, can I jump in and mention something here? I know it's past time and I think, Andrew, this would be great for you to mention for the single guys like myself and, and looking to find the right people, the two or three people to pray together. Uh, you had yeah. a great suggestion for me to go about it yeah. and, I, and I thought it'd be great for you to share it with the single ones here so they know which step to take after that. Well, I think, you know, um, I know this, God wants you to, Want you to pray with two guys? Ask him who are the who are the right two guys to pray with, and I, I tell you that th they will they will come about. But start just just pick the phone up, ask the question. I, I, I know that when you do that, you you will you will find the right people. You really will. Same with the girls. Yeah, it's it's as easy as that. Just ask ask God. He'll show you. Thanks, Andrew. Bless you guys. Have yeah. a great day. Thanks, Andrew. Hey everyone, a great day. Yeah. Thanks all.